Hello, hi. <laughs> hi everyone. I'm Daniel Chechik and this is my colleague Anna Davidi. We are security researchers of secu security researchers from Trustface Spider Labs and we are going to show you RDI. Pay attention. Now you, you better actually pay attention. Uh, I'm going to kind of help you out in case you can't see very well but I'm not going to tell you the cool parts. So if you notice it yourself, cool and if not in 10 minutes you'll probably know what happened. So this is a browser. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> and this is our website with a cool cat picture. Fiddler, which is an HTTP proxy, we're going to record all the traffic. And this is Google Translate. <laughs> And that's Windows Calculator. <laughs> and math. <laughs> and that's it, really. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> okay, th that's, that's cool because Google just exploited our machine. But before we're going to talk about what RDI is, we are going to have one quick slide about why RDI is. Okay, security web scanners. Um, that's definitely looks like a really boring slide, but we are in DEF CON, so let's cut the crap and face the truth. There are 38 security URL scan engines on this list, and they are all based on the same technology, most of them actually. Blacklist. It doesn't matter how you call it your reputation, your categorization, it's just blacklist with fancy names. Of course, some of them may do some other stuff, like, um, static analysis or even dynamic analysis. But the core of the majority is blacklist. It may sound surprising that in 2013 this Asian technology is still heavily used. But the fact is that it works pretty good. Um, the way that your reputation is done is pretty simple. It's kind of a scoring system. So new domains or IP is automatically more suspicious than veteran and popular websites. I mean, let's take Google.com for instance. It's a website that everyone trusts, right? Right? Okay, sure. Um, no, no one is ever going to blacklist Google. Okay, so we use the VirusTotal uh, website to scan a different website, a popular website, uh, yahoo.com. And as you can see, the security vendors pretty much agree that it's a clean and safe website except for Commodore which finds Yahoo suspicious for some reason that I really don't know why. <laughs> but just, let's just move on. Okay. What is RDI? Um, you are probably wondering what the hell we are talking about and why are they talking about your reputation? Well, don't worry and don't even bother to look it up either because we came up with this term and even Wikipedia doesn't know what it means. But in a few minutes you will know. Okay. So let's assume we have a user, we have some kind of a website that provides a service and we have our website. If the user accesses our website, he will receive a legitimate website. If the service accesses our website, it will receive the same legitimate website. So basically so far everyone who accesses our website is perfectly safe and shouldn't suspect anything. But if the user accesses our website using the service which downloads the content from our website, and does whatever it does with it, the code is executed and turn the page into a malicious page. So that's sort of the bird's eye view on RDI. And now we're going to kind of take a look at what we need in order to execute such an attack. So the first thing we're going to need is one simple web page. And really any web page will do. We chose to use a WordPress blog to not look too suspicious and drown in internet traffic. And what we're going to need next is a trustworthy web utility. And what I mean by trustworthy web utility is we need some sort of website that people are pretty familiar with, that's sort of trusted. And it needs to have some sort of service that will take content that's provided by the user and manipulate it somehow. And finally, in some way, also return it to users. 
For example, we're going to use the Yahoo Cache service, and it doesn't really matter that it's Yahoo. Obviously, it could be you know Google, Bing, Yandex, Baidu, anything will do really. And the last thing we need is we're going to need a script, JavaScript code, that's going to behave differently within certain contexts. And really, this will be the core of the concept of RDI. This will be a script that sort of represents the behavior Daniel described earlier. The, um, kind of thing where this code will behave completely different when it's under the context of Yahoo's cache service. And we'll dig into the details of that in a bit. And of course, you need funny cat pictures. And this is by the way what Daniel looked like when I was like, let's put lots of funny cat pictures in there. <laughs> no it doesn't. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to do a demo of Yahoo cache. Uh, the attack, but this time we're going to go into a bit more detail, uh, not just show you a video, we're going to do it um, hopefully live. Uh, this is Vegas, we're gambling, we're hoping everything works here. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time gambling in Vegas, you should be proud. I'm doing it live and let's hope I win. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to a website that we prepared and we cached on Yahoo. And this is the website, it's a regular WordPress blog. Uh, we can take a quick peek at the source, we're not going to go over it obviously, but uh, you'll be able to see that there is nothing particularly suspicious about it. I know that there are like imports and stuff, you'll have to trust us, we're not going to go over everything. But it's a completely clean WordPress website. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the cached version of this website, uh, that which we have prepared in advance, and see what happens. Now, uh, we'll get to it in the end, just sort of RDI and advantages of different services, but the fun part about using a caching service is that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. What's this called? Shot the noob. Why do we do it? First time speakers. <clears throat> well, we got one back there. There you go. First time attendee. You guys are like, I don't even have to say it anymore. Okay, cheers. 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 Woo. <laughs> so as I was saying, um, yeah. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, the cool thing about using a cache service is that due to the nature of caching, it saves content that's no longer there. We can actually have an attack that we once had somewhere and then remove it completely once the page is cached and we'll have an attack that's completely hosted by Yahoo and only by Yahoo, which is what we did here. And, you know, it's pretty nice. Oh, right, it's just now finished. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> there we go. Look at this. It's not a screenshot, see? It's an actual cow. All right, so, um, um, now we're going to take a look at the one part I didn't really explain and that's going to be the script, the source code behind what happened here. Now we're going to try to understand what happened and what we did. Um, the first part, is, the first thing that the script really does is it's going to try to access a span tag that exists within the page. Uh, because we're running um, under Yahoo's cache, the span tag is going to be the following. Yahoo is not responsible for the content of this page. And <laughs> we thought, <laughs> We thought that would be like a fun string to use and we decided to use this as a sort of key. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to take this string and we're going to generate some sort of uh, pseudo unique key, just something unique enough for us. And we encrypted most of our malicious code with this key. And <laughs> yeah. uh, the next thing we're going to do is, uh, this is kind of like a sidetrack thing, it's a very simple um, obfuscation trick that's used constantly in the wild. Uh, what we're going to do here is we put in the page a huge div tag that contains, it's called waka div and it contains waka number, waka number, waka number. And <laughs> all of this is basically our malicious code. It's slightly obfuscated. Uh, the waka delimiter is meant to be a percent u and we replaced it just really to prevent those kind of, you know, those silly defenses that go if you have a really long string that has percent u in it many times, just block it. And that's ridiculous. So we just replace it with something and we're going to fix it back here. And once we have our code back, we're going to now try and decrypt it 
with the key we just generated from the yeah, it's not responsible, the last string. And we're going to evaluate it, which means that right now we have some sort of string that has been deobfuscated and decrypted, and it's going to try to turn it into JavaScript code. So, only if we are really in the context of Yahoo's caching service, only if we really have the content that we expected within the span tag that we knew exactly where it would be, only then will these two methods that we're going to try to execute actually exist. Because as you can see, they're not defined anywhere else within our code. We just pretty much showed you everything. And that's, that's sort of um, how the script pulls off this cool trick. Um, well, that's cool because we just managed to host our attack on Yao. Um, but we want to take things one step further. We want to make it even more evasive. Um, so this time we'll use Google as an example because we don't really want to pick on anyone in particular here. So here's Google Translate service, which I use it quite a lot because I don't know English. <laughs> so did you notice? <laughs> if, actually, that's if you haven't <laughs> noticed, but never mind. <laughs> okay. So this time we are going to execute our, our attack not only by the context we are in, we are actually going to construct our attack using Google Translate service. So I hope you still remember the demo we presented in the beginning. We are going to get back to it now and take it step by step. So this is Google Translate service and we just type in the link to our website and ask Google to translate it from Hebrew to English. Uh, of course we can't really expect the user to, to browse to Google Translate and type in the link to our website because, and get exploited because probably won't do it. So Hopefully. Yeah. So uh, as you probably know there is a uh, Google allow us, they give us the ability to generate a direct link to a translated page included the languages and everything so it shouldn't be a problem. And of course with this URL we can spread it via email, social networks or any other media. And again it's Google. Who will blacklist Google? Okay. So let's take a look on the flow of the attack Google using Google Translate service. Okay. Uh, the user trying to access our website and uh, using the Google Translate service. So he access the Google Translate which download the content from our website and our website simply sends back the content of the page. The Google Translate wrap the content and add some translation script and finally send it back to the user. Uh, the br user browser translate the content of, of the page and by doing so oh, I get this one. and by doing so it created a decryption key for us to use. And afterward the JavaScript code is executed and uses the key to decrypt the JavaScript code which turns the, turns the page into a malicious page. Okay, so uh, once more we can take a look at exactly how it happens. And you'll see that the concept, uh, as you could see right now, the concept is very similar. Uh, what we wanted to do by giving two different services and two different examples is just kind of show you where it differs between services and where it kind of looks the same. I'm not going to go over the things that look the same. I'm just going to show you what we did with this one. So this time we added a couple of div tags into the page with um, text in Hebrew. And the first one contains the following text which as you can obviously see says script. <laughs> uh, or rather is going to be translated to script by Google's translation. And we needed a key as well so we used the obvious choice which is Bob Marley. And <laughs> it translates to Bob Marley by the way. <laughs> and we're going to use this to generate a key. Uh, of course you can see here the Waka div uh, similar to before. And the code is going to look similar and yet different and I hope you can read this kind of. Um, but the first thing that's going to happen here is we're going to try to create an actual element within the DOM. And this element is actually going to take content from within the translated page. We're going to try to dynamically fetch the word script that was just translated by Google and generate an actual script element within the DOM of the page. Of course this means that if the Google translation scripts didn't work or if anything went wrong this will not create a script element and absolutely nothing malicious will happen. Um, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the key Bob Marley and we're going to do actually we use the exact same code to generate the key and do the deobfuscation because well we're lazy and it works so we'll be using the same concept. Um, so what we're doing now 
is basically decrypting our code using the key Bob Marley, the English string Bob Marley, which again only exists if Google's translation worked on our page. And as opposed to the caching service, which just sort of made sure that we're kind of under the Yahoo cache context, uh, the translation here actually, we actually waited for Google to do the translation work. They actually constructed the attack for us when they did the translation of the page on the client side. Um, and of course, finally, we're going to try to execute a method, hello world, which does not exist anywhere besides in our obfuscated and encrypted uh, code. So, I guess what we're trying to say here is that RDI is really a technique. It's sort of a method. It's taking all these services that take content from the user and somehow reflect it back um, in order to construct our attack or rather in order to obfuscate or evade with our attack. Um, as you probably noticed throughout here, the point of RDI is context. That's the most important thing here. Because Obviously, when you think about it, you might be asking yourself, so why don't I just take my malicious link and put it in Google Translate? And, and um, basically, the problem is that if you go to Google Translate and you try to put in a malicious link, it's obviously going to be flagged as a malicious page and it's, it's not like you're going to be able to go to it. It's going to give up the big red message, you know, this website is suspicious, don't come near it, you know, turn off your computer, throw it on the window, do something. Uh, it's not going to let you access it. However, they do not scan the website they're about to translate within their own context. They don't scan it as if they are a user using this service. And so they will not see what we are trying to do here at all. Um, of course, everything I just said leads us to the fact that it's very hard to detect. Because if you think about all the elements here, everything we did, uh, we had a big div tag with lots of content. We could have used any delimiter. We could have split it up. We could have done lots of things with it. Um, when you consider what we did with the... Um, the key for translation, we could use different languages, we could have put it different places, we could use any string. Um, we could, for the caching service, we could have picked any element that's added from Yahoo Cache, which means all of this is extremely difficult. You cannot sign it statically. You really have to be in line looking at the content exactly as it's going to be at the user in order to understand what's happening and see what's going to happen. And our conclusion from this is that RDI is pretty awesome for evasion. But, um, you know, our word and all that. Uh, we wanted to test it against some of the internet and see how awesome it really is. And so we went to VirusTotal once more because it has lots of uh, security engines to test it against. And we also this time wanted to test it against WebAWET, which if you don't know is a dynamic code analysis. We want to see if the code is actually executed, what they're going to see. Um, and we first took the translation page, but when accessed directly, our translation attack page, um, when accessed without the translation link. And of course, as you can see, virus total said that zero out of, how many is it? 39 detections? None, nobody said it was malicious. And well, they'd be correct because as we said, our code is not at all malicious when accessed directly. And when we put it on WebAWET, which dynamically scanned it, it said that this page is benign, no exploits were identified, and no evals were executed. And again, when accessed this way, they'd be correct because again, nothing happened. But then we said, okay, now let's the, take the actual attack URL, the one with all the translation features added and see what happens then. And, well, we put on WebAWET, the dynamic analysis, and it broke, <laughs> apparently. Um, we're going to let them know, but they're actually uh, pretty cool people. They fixed it before we could even tell them, which is nice. I think now it flags it as suspicious, I believe. And more interestingly is when we put it on, back on virus solo, we actually got one detection, one single engine that dynamically scanned our content and figured out what was happening. And that would be the security site check. So if there's any security people in the crowd, good job. Um, they actually dynamically ana analyzed the content exactly as we intended for the attack to be executed and figured out that we were attacking with this page. Um, in the context of RDI, this doesn't really concern us because as Daniel said in the boring slide at the very beginning, RDI is not meant to deal with these dynamic sort of engines. It's meant to weed out the other 38 engines that use all these um, blacklisting sort of techniques. Uh, it's meant to kind of push us forward from really using these old technologies and force us to use, to really understand what's happening when we're analyzing a website and trying to understand if it's malicious or not. Um, so this is RDI. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I don't think we're going to have questions and answers right here, but we'll be in the Q&A room later if you want to come chat, ask questions and all that. 
Um, thank you.